The DeAndre Quandry, a three-point plan. Point one, the Kiki legacy. Yes, we will boo and taunt DeAndre Jordan for the remainder of his career and beyond in Dallas. The question is, how will we taunt him? Now, college basketball fans in the age of social media have been very creative but also very cruel and ugly in their taunting procedures. The gold standard we should strive for is the taunts directed at Daryl Strawberry in the 80s and 90s. Daryl! Daryl! Simplicity, elegance, exuberance. That's what we should strive toward. But try and do that with DeAndre in your head. Try and envision the AAC all chanting DeAndre. See, it doesn't work. Three syllables. It's going to get muddy. It's going to be difficult to build consensus and emphasis. That's just really not going to work. But a quick review of the pivotal disappointments in Dallas Mavericks history gives us the answer. When DeAndre Jordan is introduced in the starting lineup for Los Angeles Clippers, we should all chant Kiki. Kiki! 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 Every time he steps up to the foul line, before, during, and after missing his foul shots, we should regale him with Kiki! Because that's who he is. The right term is not betrayal or reneging. He has jilted the Mavericks, never played a minute, and cut us deep. Yes, he is Kiki Vandeweghe, the first big fish to spurn the Dallas Mavericks. Point number two. We must posterize DeAndre. I don't mean a figurative, we just want to dunk on him, but I mean we literally need a poster of DeAndre being dunked on by a Dallas Maverick moving forward. With DeAndre, he's a rim protector, he's a shot blocker. We have to go after this man. Essentially, this offseason, he, along with Blake Griffin and the other Clippers, they have posterized the Mavericks as a franchise. That's what's unprecedented. The posterizing of a franchise. Now, I'm like you. I would love to knock the Clippers out of the playoffs. I'd love to knock them out of playoff contention. I'd love to win the season series against them. I'm, I'm not sure any of those is really a realistic goal. Now, I'm thrilled we brought Jeremy Evans into the fold. But it should be obvious, the man who needs to posterize DeAndre. Chandler Parsons, it is up to you. Notoriously, he played you close like butter played toast. And that's big. So you need to go after him. Again, there's no shame in getting your shot blocked by DeAndre Jordan. But we, as a franchise, for the healing, we need to posterize him. Another candidate, Richard Jefferson. I know he's getting old. You saw what he did to Kid Gilchrist in February, and yes, that was waved off. It was an offensive foul. That matters zero percent. He posterized Kid Gilchrist. We need to posterize DeAndre. We can go out and get JaVale McGee. I don't care how crazy or damaged he is. Shannon Brown's got to be playing somewhere. Let's go get him. Maybe he's the one on the heat. I'll bet you five dollars we can get Deshaun Stevenson. We go out and fill a roster. Maybe just for those three or four games we play the Clippers. We must posterize DeAndre. Parson sure thought he had him. Lord, we know he had cubes. But Fagan's oral agreement can't stand up to the truth he called game. So we don't get DeAndre, we get Zaza Pachulia. And sign time sing someday we can dream all we want. So yes, we posterize DeAndre, we make the posters, we sell the posters, and then the proceeds from the posters go directly to the Houston Food Bank, which brings me to point three, the charity strike. We know DeAndre is a Texan, we know he lives in Houston, we know he's tied to that community. We also know he has his challenges from the free throw line. What I propose is we take our thirst for vengeance and we take all the spite in our collective hearts and we channel it toward philanthropy to the Houston Food Bank. Now the Houston Food Bank has a national reputation for accountability and for efficiency. Now these are two things you can't expect from DeAndre Jordan. Don't get me started on accountability and efficiency, sure, from the field, very efficient. He seldom has the ball in his hands more than a second. He makes seven out of ten of every one of his shots. 
but the foul line's a little bit different. And here's where I propose we channel our spite and vengeance toward philanthropy. For every game of the upcoming season that DeAndre Jordan makes more foul shots than he misses, I will personally donate $6, his uniform number six, I will donate $6 to the Houston Food Bank. Maverick fans, I'm asking you to join me. Pledge $6 to the Houston Food Bank for every game where DeAndre Jordan makes more foul shots than he misses. It's not that risky a proposition. Yes, there's 82 games, but last season he only did it 13 times. So a couple times a month you kick in six bucks to a worthy cause. That's the worst case scenario. But if enough Mav fans are doing that, it is my hope and my guess that someone in DeAndre's orbit in Houston has either hosted an event, volunteered for the food bank, is on the board of the food bank, and it's going to get back to him. DeAndre, when you make your foul shots, all of these scorned Mab fans are pouring money into our food bank. So I realize it's counterintuitive for Mavs fans to be asked to give money when DeAndre does well from the foul line and to a, a charity in Houston, no less. It's not primarily that I wanna help the communities that the Houston Food Banks does such a wonderful job in serving. Good for them, but I don't care. What I care about is I want DeAndre Jordan to crack and I want the Los Angeles Clippers to implode. Side note, the Columbus Clippers are going to win an NBA championship before the Los Angeles Clippers. The whole league has known that for years. Everyone has known that for years. Elton Brand knows that in this coming season, the added pressure, this man who wants to please everyone and is a delicate head case, I think he will crack. Because he knows if he misses both of these foul shots, he's very likely going to cost his hometown. He's going to cost the Houston Food Bank five figures of donations from angry Mavs fans. I'd like to close with a word to some of the more altruistic Mavs fans who think there's something ugly and distasteful about channeling venom and spite and vengeance toward philanthropy. I know how you feel, but I'd like you to think of DeAndre Jordan and I'd like you to consider it for just a few days. I'm confident you'll change your mind. Mavs fan for life.